Hi, I'm Alan Whiting from OutbackTravelAustralia.com.au and we're in Alice Springs. When Colonel Warburton left here in 1873 on his epic journey hoping to find an inland sea, the town didn't look anything like this. He had 17 camels, we've got some Toyotas. And we're continuing our testing program of Bridgestone's new D697 light truck tyre. This tyre you're looking at has already been to Arnhem Land on a Ford Ranger ute. And now we've fitted the same tyres to a Prado. It promises to be nice and rocky, so we'll give the tyres a fair workout. This monument marks the spot where Warburton and his party left the relative civilization of the telegraph line and made west for the Western Australian coast. Considering the significance of the expedition and the life risk they took, we think this family memorial could be enhanced by a much larger one. When Colonel Warburton left Alice Springs, he headed north following the telegraph line for about 70 kilometres and then he turned southwest, aiming for the Oak Over River and the Western Australian coast. A journey that was going to take him 10 months, he didn't know that at the time. He crossed today's Tanami Road, which is what we're on at the moment, at a spot not far from here. We wouldn't be out here doing Warburton's trek except for the efforts of a very special mate of ours, Joel Fleming, who runs a tour and training business in Alice Springs. When he's not in the 200 series, powering along on these tracks, he's in this chair, four-wheel drive of course. Absolutely. Joel, how hard was it organising this? Because we're on Aboriginal land all the time. Well, it's a matter of getting in contact with some of the guys that I grew up as a young fellow with. Yep. Who were traditional owners of the country, um, Francis and Otto. And yeah. Neville and trying to coordinate that to get them to be enthusiastic about coming out, which isn't difficult. Yeah. Really? And, uh, so well, they love the with? country, oh, don't they? love the country. When, they they know you're not, when they know you're not going to knock it round. That's it. Yeah. And we're going to go out and have a bit of a sticky beak of where this old yeah. fella trudged with these camels. Yeah. And God. How did they do it? Oh, my duck crazy. Because it took him 10 months. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, you imagine living out here 10 months and saying, I'm going to go and get water over there, for yeah. instance. And, and 17 camels, you've got to keep them wet. Yeah, and you had two left when you got to the end. Yeah, amazing. Oh, bloody crazy. Yeah. Easier for us in the land cruisers. Oh. <laughs> land cruisers, just point and shoot. Yeah, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, a few tracks around might help it a bit too. Yeah. So we're not yeah. knocking the bush around. Right, going cross country and yeah. everything, using up what's there. Yeah, great. Terrific. We're looking forward to it. All oh, good fun. <laughs> Crossing today's Tanami Road alignment, Warburton continued trying to go southwest, finished up in a westerly direction running along the top edge of the McDonnell Ranges. He looked in vain for the source of the Fink, he was a little too far north for that. And then he came across what he supposed correctly was Hust's Bluff that you can see behind me, part of a spectacular mountain range. And then he headed off towards central Mount Wedge.
Warburton marvelled at this piece of rock that fell off the cliff behind us and speared into the ground with its narrow base. He predicted that it must soon fall over. Well, we're here 140 years later and it's still standing. Okay, tell us about this one, Francis. This one is this one, only one rock standing in there in the middle and right around it there's all other rock and there's water there. People used to drink in those old days. And this one we call Palka Karinya. But that, uh, I don't know much about this story but beyond that I can't talk about it, woman business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all. got a taste of what was to come in this semi-desert country. He was heading southwest still, looking for water, found none and had to retreat to the northeast. Occupation every day. Food they could carry and a little water but nowhere near enough for the men and the camels. He found out if he stuck to the rocky range country he was almost guaranteed getting water in rock holes and springs. But he had to head southwest so he had this constant dilemma the country that gave him ample water was taking him in the wrong direction. Sinkholes were another source of water. These ones are dry after lack of rain, but he was lucky with some of these.
we were about to have our own water issues as thick clouds gathered and then it began to rain. Eva Springs looks today exactly as it must have looked to Warburton when he arrived at this beautiful place. Fresh water running out of a mountain range. We didn't need the water because it was raining on us as we walked up to the source of the spring. The giveaway was a stand of Malaluka trees that need to have their feet in water. Warburton described a green slime on the water that was tasteless and didn't do any damage to the water taste and quality and it's exactly the same today. Then you can see where he goes up here to Waterloo Wells. See what they call what do you call that place? Uh, this one, really, I know what we call it. Good luck, yeah. But I, when we land on the chopper, there's a big, big water on it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like big sawgrass. Yeah, right. Granite. So Granite, yeah, right. Yeah, on, on sand dunes. Near the sand dunes. Uh -huh. That's where I'd like to get. So where you're just pointing, Alan? Yep. Just down a bit. There. Uh, there, about Barren up. Hills, yeah. uh, high table land, mm. rocky mound. Yep, we've been here. Huh? That's new map and, and the original map. Yeah. Same spot. Yeah. Highland Rocks were found Pockles Long. What's it called? Pockles Long. Pockles Long. Yeah. They've all people talk us there. We're doing safe clearance. Mm. Yeah. Long time. Most of these people, all the people around here, all went to Mount Doreen. Yeah. In uh -huh. the drought, eh? Yeah, all from all that area. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the granites. So and they went they, this way out of the desert. That's when they started Yundamu because of that yeah. reason, you know. All these people were droughted out of this part of the desert. And they went to you, Mount, they went to the granite start, to start with. And they started and Mount Doreen Station here because that was already established. Right. 1928. And then they made Yundamu and then shifted everybody uh -huh. to there.
the rain got heavier and heavier. Clearly we were in for a wet camp tonight. We can sympathise with Warbert and, and his crew. They got rained on in the desert and had to spend a day drying out all their bedding and that's exactly what we have to do as well. We're running two Toyotas on this Warburton reenactment and this is Prado and Joel, my mate, has got a GX200 series and we're testing Bridgestone's D697 light truck tyres on both vehicles. These ones, these exact tyres have already done Arnhem Land. Uh, we did a run in a Ford Ranger towing a camper up into some of the stoniest country we could find. And every vehicle with us had punctures, but we didn't. So these exact tyres have now just done uh, a week's worth of hard running on stony and sandy ground and still no punctures and I'm monitoring the, the pressure and we don't even have a drop in pressure so they're, they're really good. Uh, the ride quality for a light truck tyre is excellent. So that's how my bum's been feeling it. How about you, Joe? Yeah, the same, mate. And we haven't had, we've had plenty of sticks that have been yeah. pointing at us. And yeah, well, we've had a couple of, couple of stakes, tires haven't we? already in the front runners on the opposition's tyres. Opposition's tyres, <laughs> nicely put. And um, <laughs> yeah, no, the ride quality is really good. Yeah. Those bumps and corrugations, yeah. beautiful, don't step out, you know. Yeah, for a 10 ply tyre. You know, they used to so, ride like rocks. Well, they? you had to let them right down to yeah. get us some ride quality, yeah. but no, even in the sand they're pretty good. Yeah, well, I've deliberately been running road pressures in these. Mm. I knew you'd dropped yours, so I thought I'd leave mine up on road pressure. So we've done all that yeah. and in the with mud and 42, everything. 46 through yeah. the mud, the sand, yeah. everything. Should I? It's and a mud. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been running close to what the recommended pressure is yep. on the other ones, and yeah. they do a really good job. Yeah. Quite yeah, nice. I, th I, I think they're on a winner with this. We and had a good, six good grip in the mud too, yeah. which is surprising. Yeah, well, even at full road pressure, the boys were saying how they were slip sliding and mm. that gooey stuff when yeah. we got the big storm. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't have Great any there. sideways at all. The traction control has only come on a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even heard mine. The 694s were good, but I think I think they've uh, ticked all the boxes with these. They're good. Yeah. And no flats? No, didn't look like getting one, did no. it? There's no. I've checked all mine, not a mark on them. No. And um, lots and lots of sticks, lots of mulga. Yeah. Yeah, there's he, so much stuff lying around. Oh. You wouldn't want to make camp at night, would you? No. Drive in on this stuff, it was sticks everywhere. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Well, we've had a good run so far. Let's do a bit more. Okay. <laughs> While we dried our gear, Pete and Mike fixed a couple of flat tyres, and then it was time to get back on Warburton's tracks. We were now getting quite close to the Tanami Road once more and signs of civilization emerged like a creaky old mill and then we came across a stand of marble gums before hitting the main road. We were now quite close to the Western Australian border and the journey from this 
point onwards we will do next season. Morning Joel. Morning Al, how are you? Good sleep? Absolutely. No rain last night. No rain, night. thank God, yeah. <laughs> God. A bit overcast and scary this yeah, morning, no, but it's lifting, but, I think. No, we just got a couple of spits and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, but they'd have welcomed the rain out there. Oh, mate. And they did get a bit by the, on, by the yeah. reading the book, you know. They they had big tarps out that they yeah. could catch water and yeah. a few creeks were running. and We're spoiled, aren't we? Oh, yeah. mate, yeah. We get up this morning, get out of the tent, and the Toyota's still here. It didn't run away during no, the night. No. Yours didn't either? No, mine's still no. there. Yeah. But I was just reading on the diary, um, Sunday the 20th. A happy day at the prospect of leaving this place tomorrow because they're watered up now and yeah, they're ready the to springs, go. Yeah. But in the evening, our native Charlie, who shepherds the camels, reported that three had run away southward. He had followed the tracks for several miles and one camel had broken its hobbles. Now, that was a huge problem, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you imagine your land crews are disappearing. Yeah, or, or half your food <laughs> yeah, toddles well. off. Yeah. Dingo raid your camp and <laughs> yeah, so, amazing. You and know, they went 60 miles to chase the camels off and they didn't find it. Never, just how did they manage to do it? Well, with 17 camels, I mean, they're starting to. to, to well, they lost four, didn't they? Yeah. By the time they got to Eva yeah. Springs, you know. Yeah. So. And the journey was only yeah. what, a quarter yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got to the Okava River with two. Yeah. Because they were killing them for food. Yeah, yeah. As Making the, jerky out of them, you know. Yeah, ate everything. Apparently, camel hoof is a rare delight, or camel pad. <laughs> I think the steak we had last night it was, was bloody all right, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but they are tough. Yeah. Well, they had to be. Yeah. Just amazing. Amazing none of them died. Well, Considering yeah, right. they went to the great sandy desert. And, and I mean, the Lewis, how was that? The, the Lewis, Warburton and Son, and, mm. and, the, and the Aboriginal cracker, yeah. Charlie. Yeah, as Bushman. Whew. Yeah. Best in the business. Finding water. Absolutely. And when we do part two, out in the Great Sandy, how you find water in that desolate place, I have no idea. Well, we've got good, good vibes from Otto that he knows the people that know the desert. And Perfect. Gonna get up Good. to Belgo and talk to them yeah. up there, and they're gonna take us. Well, we've been spoilt this time with plenty of water. If we'd been relying on on water, there's plenty around. Yeah. But it won't be like that out there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I hope not. Because <laughs> if it is, it's coming from the heavens, yep. and I will yeah. uh, impede a bit of movement, doesn't it? Yep. Well, we better get on the road, I suppose. Yeah, I guess we better cruise down. And... For us, it was an easy commute down the Tanami Road towards a hot shower in Alice Springs. The McDonnell Ranges made a beautiful sight. 